What's going on, Foot Clan? It's good to be back and want to remind everybody about jointhefoot.com. That's where the thousands and thousands of supporters of this show are hanging out. The official Foot Clan, we're giving them an extra episode every single week just for helping support this show. So if you want a bunch of cool stuff, including that extra show, and honestly, we all need that extra show, that extra content in these times, head over to jointhefoot.com. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. I'm back, baby. Oh, there he is. There he is. Oh, my back. goodness. I'll be honest. It feels, feels great to be back. Andy Holloway, Jason well, Moore, Mike. Good. The fantasy hitman, right? Al Borland standing by. Judge Giamatti standing by. I'll be honest, it feels terrible to be back. <laughs> this is the worst. Well, I mean, in some ways. But this is a strange time for all of us, and I'm so excited to be back on the show. We've got a great episode of the podcast today. We have some more free agency uh, to talk about, to break down the implications uh, lots of things I want to get your guys' thoughts on. I'm just happy to be here. It's such a strange time, but this feels comfortable. This feels like home. Well, because you're at, literally at home. Oh, that's why. <laughs> oh, that's why home. I feel. I was wondering why that was. <laughs> I feel like I'm just extra. I feel like I'm right in my bedroom. <laughs> uh, that is <laughs> that is true, and I'm excited to be with the Foot Clan. I'm excited here. Uh, Tuesday, March 24th, to be with you all at this very uh, unprecedented time in our country, in this world, where things that are normal, there aren't a lot of them right now. So I hope that we can be some of your normal for as long as it takes to get back to normal everywhere else. This is the first time I've ever been referred to as normal, and I <laughs> and thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Twitter at the FF Ballers. Mike mentioned it. Our community, jointhefoot.com. Over there on Patreon, we've got the extra episode every week. The website's thefantasyfootballers.com. And football is one of the the few things that is still going on right now. Strangely enough, like all of sports are shut down, but there's plenty of football to talk about. What a world. Yeah, so, I mean, we've got buy, sell today. We've got the free agent breakdowns. We'll get into some mailbag if we have time for that as well. Be sure to check us out. Support us over on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe. Listen. We're ad-free on Stitcher Premium. We're on Spotify. Wherever you listen to podcasts, we're going to be with you. And uh, excited we were able to put up a uh, a Spitballers episode yesterday. Oh, yeah. My, vo I mean my voice is getting better each and every day. I appreciate all the, the kind words from people as I've been out. And I'm just excited to get back and to uh, spend some time talking fantasy football with all of you. Let's do some buy-sell. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. How you doing, Brooks? I know you're, I know you're out there somewhere. Doing great. That's good. All right. That's, 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 that's all is all good got. news. That is good, Cal good A calming news. voice in difficult times. Judge Giamatti's doing fine, everybody. Andy hasn't been on the show for a while. I'm doing great. Thank you, Brooks. That's okay. Uh, I like his steadying hand. Here's the buy sell that I have for you guys. I love this question because uh, I, I read it a few minutes ago. I'm really not sure where I stand, so I'm going to let you guys inform me. Buy or sell, Derrick Henry or Nick Chubb will have at least 1,400 rushing yards again in 2020. So those were the only two running backs last year that had more than 1,400 rushing yards, both returning to the same teams that they accomplished that on. But what are you doing? Are you, buy, uh, are you buying or selling Henry or Chubb, not both, but one at least, next year over 1,400 yards? Uh, I'll, I'll weigh in here. Uh, I am buying Derrick Henry, repeating over 1,400 rushing yards. That hasn't been done as far as a player repeating back-to-back uh, -back 1,400 rushing yards uh, for the last 13 years. Last player to do it was LaDainian Tomlinson. So this is not an easy feat. 
Um, and I'm sure we're going to talk because, Mike, I know you're a big Nick Chubb fan. I'm sure you're going to uh, bring up the Jack Conklin yep. signing from the yep. Titans. Great right tackle from the Titans going to the Browns. And, and that does have an effect. But the reason I'm going to buy it, I've talked a lot about Derrick Henry as a as an outlier. When you look at the analytics crowd and you say, well, this is how much people get and this is where they return to means. And you know, he's bigger and he's stronger and he's faster than most people his size. And, and it actually makes it difficult to tackle him. He's, as seen he's by, bigger than people his yes, actual I, size? He, That's incredible. I, I'm saying all people running his packs, size are smaller than him. Amazing! I believe that is true. Look, look at wow. how he fits in the pad. Alternative you'll facts. See that, that's right. That's right. No, but he he is an outlier to that. If you look as well, so you're you're losing Jack Conklin, and that does make a difference in the sense that uh, you know I, I looked up the 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 splits to the left tackle to the right tackles. 108 uh, carries to the left, including the playoffs last year. 127 to the right, and he did average almost a yard more per rush to the right. So losing Jack Conklin matters. But the biggest changes last year were actually getting Taylor Lewan back. He was suspended the first four games as the left tackle. And then obvious, the big one, uh, Ryan Tannehill coming in. And if you look at those two changes, you're talking about the first four weeks, the first six weeks of the season, Derrick Henry was not as good as the end. And so there's this narrative that says, well, players get tired. The NFL defenders are easier to beat up when you're a big bodied back. But I think it was the fact that the offense got way better with Taylor Lewan and with Ryan Tannehill. With, with Ryan Tannehill, he was almost on pace for 2,000 rushing yards. Even if you take just from week five when Taylor Lewan got back, he was on pace for over 1,700 rushing yards. And, you know, look, he, he finished with over 1,400 last year in 15 games. So I'm buying it. I think Derrick Henry will finish with more than 1,400 rushing yards this season. Now, you you mentioned the addition of Jack Conklin, which is big. Last year, the Titans ranked eighth overall, according to Pro Football Focus. The Browns were 23rd overall. Where do you weigh in, Mike? It's it's tough to really buy either of these guys hitting that mark again. It, they were... Both of them joined a, just a handful of people to hit the that rushing yardage mark on the attempts that they were actually given. So both of them were were extremely efficient, uh, and and that stuff it just it bounces around uh, from year to year. I think that the the addition of Conklin is a massive massive thing for the Cleveland Browns. On top of that, now you have uh, you you have the coaching changes coming in. Will Will new head coach Kevin Stefanski continue to institute what he was doing up in Minnesota? I mean, at this point, we just kind of have to assume that he will, which that'll be a very heavy run or a very run heavy approach. We know that Nick Chubb's numbers did go down once Kareem Hunt was back from his suspension. He dropped, uh, you know, essentially 15 rushing yards per game where uh, when Kareem Hunt was around. It, 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 and it, on that pace of 86 yards a game, I mean, that's just under 1,400. I think they both can get there, but I will just, I have to sell because I think that the, for them to hit that, that 1,400 threshold is, I mean, you got to have a lot of it's really a lofty big goals. Yes. Yeah, it's a lofty goal. And if you told me buy or sell both players over 1,200, I'd be buying that. I think yeah, they'll both fine. get over 1,200. And I actually think the Browns will be as good, if not better, a running team overall next year than they were this past year. It's just a very high bar at 1,400 yards. Uh, I think I will sell both of these players. I think you're going to see some expansion in the passing game in Tennessee with Tannehill returning, the uh, the maturity of A.J. Brown and company around. And and that's just such a huge mark. I, I, if I had to pick one, I guess I'd pick Henry because of what we've seen. But I'd go ahead and sell it. All right, that was Buy or Sell from Pristine Auction, pristineauction.com. Be sure to use the registration code BALLERS, Ballers. To, to get $10 back. Get a credit on your first sports memorabilia purchase. Let's talk some news. News and notes from around the league. All right, guys. Ooh. It's a sad day. Oh. The NFL draft never... Gets to make its debut in yeah. Las Vegas. No boats. 
No boats. No, I mean, <laughs> no, it seems no like it was just skis, yesterday. No Bellagio. We were talking about the potential for players to fall into the water. And now it just seems like, uh, obviously, that doesn't matter at all. So this thing can get uh, get done without all the fanfare and the crowds in Las Vegas, but it's not going to happen. The NFL Look, officially reported that it's not going to happen. If you want this to be taken as good news, you say it like how I received it, which is the draft in Las Vegas has been canceled. And then you just say, it's just the Vegas part that's canceled. Yes. Draft is still on time. And then it's yes. like, oh, this is great news. Because I was like, oh, no, it was canceled. Draft is happening on schedule, which is is so good for fantasy because – you know, we, we talk about it all the time for Dynasty, for our own rankings in the Ultimate Draft Kit. We don't really start diving in until after the draft because it changes so much when it comes to statting players out. Now we'll have the time that we usually have before you know, the Ultimate Draft Kit, before Dynasty drafts and those type of things to make sure that uh, all the information is accurate and up to date. So glad that the NFL draft is happening as scheduled, just not where it was uh, taking it, place. It, it might be more interesting. Like what I've read is there going to be a, wh a whole bunch of you know looking into the war room because that's really the only footage that'll be a around, and that stuff's always really interesting to me. Like I want to see the owner reacting. I want to see how the the coaches are handling everything. Like that's fun. Like if if we can get actual shots of uh you know like an, it oh we got a replay we got to go back because. And then showing like a, a coach reacting to the player that they wanted getting picked right before them. I mean, that would be incredible are television. You, are you asking for the XFL to take over the production of the next six <laughs> Look, months since they got nothing else to do? The XFL did a lot of things right. And, and one of those things was access. And we want the people want access in the NFL draft. Yeah, you're, you're not wrong. It will be very interesting to see. I'm glad we have that content. I'm glad that we're fortunate enough as fans of this sport to have the opportunity to still follow along with everything that's going on and according to the normal league year as it stands right now. Here's some more news for you. The Eagles have acquired cornerback Darius Slay from the Lions in exchange for a 2023rd and fifth round draft pick. What was your reaction to this move as a uh, you know well-respected corner, one of the weaknesses for Philadelphia, um, you know, they pick him up and, and he's in that division now, you know, I, he wanted out. And so that's, you know, he kind of forced his way, but from the lion's standpoint, this is just such a dumb, dumb. How did he ride out of town, Jason? What's that? How did he ride out of town? Oh, no, mm. no. On a what sleigh. Dumb? On a sleigh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like, all right, he rode a sleigh. That's fine. It just wasn't. I mean, I don't know who's at fault there. I think we I, share blame. Is that joke better in quarantine or out? <laughs> I think out. I think if we were together, <laughs> that'd be better. Um, but oh the reality is, you know, if if they, you know, Slay had the one year on his contract, if they play him out, then they get a third round pick for him compensatory plus his services. Now they're basically getting a fifth rounder. Uh, from the Eagles standpoint, they desperately needed uh, a playmaker in their secondary. Did they overpay him? Sure. But every time you sign someone new, they're always overpaid. And then the market resets and yada, yada. I know that he has great numbers against Amari Cooper. So Mike, yes. you'll be thrilled. That's what I was going to bring up. Warren Sharp on Twitter at Sharp Football. He did point out and highlight just how well Darius Slay has. <laughs> just how well Darius Slay has performed. Against Amari Cooper, and I mean, he essentially just shuts him down. So th that'll be a really fun matchup that we get to watch twice a year. Well, and, and really, you know, whenever you see those numbers with high-profile cornerbacks and what they do against high-profile wide receivers, sometimes it's shutting them down. Sometimes it's a team rotating the offense away from them. It doesn't really matter because it jacks up your fantasy production if you own yep. Amari Cooper, and now he's got Darius Slay in the division twice a year. So that is the kind of fantasy implication of this move. Hey, before we get to the craziness of the rest of the free agency, I want to thank a new sponsor today, Theragun. And I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart because this thing is awesome. It doesn't matter who you are, super athlete, or trying to get you know back on the horse like me. Muscle pain, it's a real thing from yes. working out. We've been playing pickleball. We've been doing those things. And all three of us have a Theragun. Theragun is, is unbelievable. I love it. As far as something that can really take the soreness and, and tension out of your muscles during a workout. I mean, 
there's a reason why 250 professional sports teams worldwide and they they use these we've we've yeah, heard you see first, them on the sidelines yeah i mean the, the, these the theraguns are really amazing and and we didn't know until you know firsthand you know i'm out there playing pickleball and i got some weight on these little legs and so it's like those legs are screaming at me going like i can't please stop please and then <laughs> i i mean you two could attest i bring my theragun every single time yes, we play you do you and do. on the side, I'm I'm blasting those things out. You don't even realize how you sore didn't even you play are. last time. You just Theragun the whole time. I don't know why you did that. <laughs> but you I don't, don't realize play. how sore they were until after you do it. And you're like, oh, my gosh, these feel so much better. It's just like two minutes on each muscle group helps you feel relaxed and calm. It, it, it's it's really an awesome thing. So, look, to feel better naturally, treat your pain, get back to your life. Try Theragun risk-free for 30 days or your money back by going to Theragun.com slash footballers. For a limited time, listeners of our podcast get up to $100 off your device. That's theragun.com slash footballers, theragun.com slash footballers. Free Agent Frenzy. I didn't get to participate in the last Free Agency Frenzy episode of this show. And so I am very excited to talk about some of these moves that we haven't talked about yet that you guys did not talk about on the last episode. So let's start with Todd Gurley. Ooh. Let's start with Todd Gurley. The Rams released Todd Gurley. And then, uh, you know, by the time your, your face went back to normal after the release, he signed a one-year $5 million contract with the Atlanta Falcons. What yeah. was your initial reaction? I think I tweeted... What we always say on this show, mamas, don't let your boys grow up to be running yes. backs because look at this offseason with Todd Gurley, David Johnson, you know, Devonta Freeman, all of these big money contracts to running backs. And, you know, the dynasty owners that thought you had something everlasting, which, by the way, you never do at running back, especially at any position, really, but certainly at running back. Here, here's Gurley released the key cog in this offense. How did you react? Well, uh, my, my first thought was Atlanta, it's a pretty decent landing spot. Uh, we, we've seen success out of the fantasy running back there. Uh, Devonta Freeman, I mean, it's it's been a couple years since it's happened, but at least it's a high-powered offense. And if you look at what Todd Gurley did last year, salvaging his fantasy uh, fantasy year, it was all touchdowns. Like That's how he got it done, and it, he got him by the boatload. But now, so now he's an Atlanta Falcon. Dan Quinn, his Falcons, as long as Dan Quinn has been the coach, the Falcons have always been in top 10 in offensive yards. I, we know Quinn's a defensive guy, but he's he's surrounding himself. Self smell. He's surrounding <laughs> smell. himself. He's surrounding himself with some <laughs> serious. Yeah. Uh, he's got smart people around him. Matt Ryan is a very good quarterback. Unfortunately, the last two years, these are numbers that we don't want to hear for Todd Gurley. 29th in rushing attempts last year. Two years ago, 30th in rushing attempts. They had some good years, like I said, back in 16 and 17 when it was Devonta Freeman was great, and then it was the Freeman-Tevin Coleman combo. Their offensive line, now, granted, they had a bunch of injuries, so it's it's hard to They really always do, though, Mike. They're going to have them again. Yeah. They just, <laughs> it's built that's, into Atlanta somehow. That's, that's I mean, an excellent it, point. They, but, I mean, Break this, it down, though. RB1, RB2. I mean, what do you think, Mike? What do you think, Jay? I would say that Todd Gurley, I would put him... Uh, I think he can still be a running back one, like a, a lower a two end. Me. Two? Yeah, I, I've, I've got him probably sneaking into that 12 spot. I would rather have him than David Johnson, uh, you know, as if you're talking about two players that have changed teams. One of the things that really gets lost here on Todd Gurley because the degenerative knee, the the utilization of C.J. Anderson two years ago, and 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 the fact that when they came out this last year, it was all managed workload, is the fact that he was healthy and he was he played, and then all of a sudden, the last seven games of the season, when they were like, "Oh man, we're not going to make the playoffs," so we got to make. They used him like crazy. He was, you know, averaging almost 17 touches per game over that stretch. And during that stretch, he was the running back nine. Yeah, Mike, you're right. It was a lot in touchdowns. That salvaged it. But I think the thing that that really salvaged was the fact that they weren't using him in the passing game at all. At, I mean, it was ridiculous. Todd Gurley, this guy who's like one of the best pass catching running backs out there for the previous two seasons, all of a sudden is like, yeah, we're not going to do that anymore. 
and that's why I think Atlanta is good for Todd Gurley, at least on a on a short scale, not necessarily for dynasty long term value. But I think that Matt Ryan will throw the ball a lot to Todd Gurley, and that's going to up his fantasy value. We we've seen Kyle, our editor, the Borgogan, talk about vacated targets going to the running back position, and you've got you know Austin Hooper gone, Devonta Freeman gone. I th I think Todd Gurley comes into a lot of receiving work for yeah. The you you can have you can have a situation where. It is the smartest move for the Rams to move on, the financial ramifications and what they've committed to, and then all the questions that they have to undergo during the year, and still have Gurley be a productive fantasy asset in Atlanta. And there were a lot of uh, worse destinations that he could have yes. ended up in without question. Now, like Denver. It, I guess, yeah, <laughs> like, like, Den like Denver. And we will, we will talk about Melvin Gordon momentarily, but I, wanna, I don't want to forget the other side of this equation with Daryl Henderson and with the Rams running game. And where do you sit when you look at somebody like Gurley in next year's fantasy draft versus a guy like Daryl Henderson, somebody with elite college production, somebody that was, yes, you know, a year too early on the hype, but going to have an opportunity, but Malcolm Brown's there. What do you think? For Henderson, it's, it's tough. I've, I honestly, I've, off the top of my head, I have no idea where people are going to feel about him for his ADP. But going back and just looking down, uh, looking at his rookie year, he did have two games, week seven, week eight, back-to-back -back games where he had 11 carries in both of those games. But what was the uh, the cohesive piece there? It was that Malcolm Brown was gone. He was injured. And as soon as Malcolm Brown returned, Daryl Henderson was shut down again. So it's, it's very, very disappointing to see a player with his draft capital for a team that needed – to fill uh, other other positions on the team, instead they went with Henderson. The fact that he could not get on the field is highly discouraging. You find discouraging. yourself concerned with that? You don't you don't just chalk it up to I don't. Gurley being in the backfield and the rookie, you know, being a rookie learning the offense. I I mean, you and I both know what we saw in film from Henderson. Yes. coming into last year, and the explosive difference between him and Brown. I just. I, it's kind of like Gore. But that's what I mean. It's is, Gore versus Singletary last year to me. It's right, like but, eventually Singletary earns the opportunity. He did, and Singletary won out. By the end of the year, Singletary was the starting running back over Frank Gore. That didn't happen with Daryl Henderson, and, and Malcolm Brown is is still on the team. Like, yeah, if, if you look... You it's, it's very, very disconcerting to me that Henderson could not get on the field. I, I, I agree with Mike here. Malcolm Brown last year was the forgotten man who everybody was saying out of Los Angeles. Look, this guy's still, he's the backup. He He's the number two guy. And then he was the number two guy, and then he got injured. And then when he, once he was back, he was the number two guy. So um, could Daryl Henderson take over? Uh, he, yeah, he could, but I don't just I don't just give that to him. In fact, I would expect them to spend a decent, uh, I, I think they'll use high draft capital value on a running back and go get, a replacement for Gurley that's a rookie rather than uh, give the ball to Daryl Henderson as, as the next lead back. That's my, yeah, I think you know, having it given to him isn't going to happen. You're not wrong there. I do think he will earn that. I think he will earn that opportunity based on, you know, they made the investment in him and his, in his history, but you're right, Mike. I mean, we haven't seen it on the field yet, so it's just a, you know, you have to put your faith and belief in the player and the talent, not the evidence yet. And it so. could be just another year of everyone drafting Daryl Henderson, and we're telling the Footland Malcolm scoop up Malcolm Brown late because he'll probably Darnell end up being Anderson the starter. Darnell Anderson or Daryl Henderson, which do you prefer? <laughs> Darnell Anderson, yes, okay. it's his Solid. time to shine. Spe what about John okay. Kelly? I mean, if you're in a dynasty league, oh, what? What? Oh, come I'm just on. saying, is in a dynasty still on league, of course you're going to say John Kelly. He what? is still on the team. Is he really? I yes. I mean, look, I love yeah, the college Yeah, I know tape you like both, him because I remember you John talking Kelly about him. And Daryl Henderson. Wanna... I, but, but I mean, but that's kind of the point, right? Like, he had great college tape, great college production. It didn't matter. It didn't matter because he wasn't used by the team, and I wanted him to be used. We might he love... He was a lower draft capital pick, though, too, and we were definitely not in consensus about John Kelly. I'll tell you that. Sure. The the draft capital, I think, is, is the big differentiator there because Kelly was, I think, a sixth rounder. Yeah. All right, Melvin Gordon, two-year deal, $16 million, heads to the Broncos, kind of a head-scratcher to me. You, you look at the situation with an undrafted yet highly talented player in Philip Lindsay in Denver, and uh, it, it can't help but remind you of Austin Eckler, 
a very highly talented undrafted player in Los Angeles. And here's Melvin Gordon coming in to ruin the undrafted party. Gordon goes to Denver. It's not the money I expected him to get on the open market. Certainly not the money he, he had expected to accept he would get. It. No, no, it's not. It's all about revenge now, Mike. It's all about revenge when the money doesn't add up. Well, if you heard, he had an offer from another team for more money, took less money so that he could play in division. Now, nobody knows who that team is, and the only team no. that was even rumored was the Bills who came out and said, we didn't make an offer, So, but that's what's been Does that been technically said. mean like when, when the Chargers made him an offer like a year and a half ago? <laughs> right. That was yes. for a oh, lot of money. They offered me way more. That oh. he decided to wait. Oh, so, man. It's so brutal. And so if you want to start start talking about the actual implications, I mean, it was it was a bad year for Melvin Gordon because he was, you know, two years ago, he was an absolute fantasy superstar. He only played in 12 games that year. And, and we had the whole situation at the end of the year. Where he's like, I let my fantasy, uh, my fantasy people down. I'm going to make it up to you. And then we saw the drop. And it's like, man, this is a bad year, except. He went back to the efficiency of Melvin Gordon. And then it turns out that two years ago, he just had this outlier season where he was playing fantastic. And then he went right back down to his, his the baseline of, of his entire career. And so it's, what does he have? What, what is he actually going to bring to the, the Denver Broncos? And what's, what, what's the opportunity here? Is Royce Freeman just completely vanquished from the earth? I would guess yes, but it wouldn't shock me at all if all of a sudden now Denver is a three running back system. No one on that team has any fantasy value that you can possibly count on unless one of these players misses time. Well, put put them in order then. I mean, it, you are Gordon, all going Go Gordon yes. Lindsay, right? Yes, yeah, Gordon, Gordon, Gordon Lindsay, yes. Yeah, Gordon Lindsay Freeman. I mean, you you've With a got stink face when you take either one of them? Yeah, yes. I, I think so, because we don't know for sure. For Melvin Gordon to have the fantasy value that his name is going to dictate his draft, you know, he, he's going to be a highly drafted player because he's a long time top five, top six fantasy back, and he signed a big contract and yada, yada. But in order for him to have that, he needs to be the true workhorse back. And while Pat Shermer has a history of using a workhorse back, you know, when, he, when he's got uh, Saquon Barkley or something, um, he has a long history, uh, and he uses whatever talent he has on the team. Philip Lindsay's a talented player. I don't think anybody out there watches Philip Lindsay and says, well, that dude sucks. And so I, I think he'll get on the field, and that will hurt both. I think it's at least a two-back timeshare here, and you, Melvin Gordon's probably going to be overdrafted based on his name, but I still think he will be a relevant fantasy owner, a fantasy player, just because of volume. I'm I'm very concerned with Lindsay's uh, – any of the pass catching numbers that we got from him before disintegrating and that representing a real deterioration of his fantasy value. Yeah, it, I was going to speak to that where you had the Drew Locke effect. It wasn't, I mean, Phil Lindsay wasn't setting the world on fire with targets by any stretch, but if once Drew Locke took over and Drew Locke is the quarterback of this team, he was seeing about two targets a game. That is that is not going to get it done. That's not that's giving you no PPR bump at all. And and Melvin Gordon needs those receptions. He, I, I think I'm I'm with you, Jason. That yes, Gordon will be a usable fantasy running back because it's tough. It's tough in the streets to find a running back that is not in a timeshare. My fear is simply how involved is Royce Freeman. Because if he is involved at all, like so last year he saw about 37% of the running back attempts. If Freeman's involved, then all three of these guys, it's going to be just a detriment. You're going to be banging your head against the wall every single time you have to start one. Yeah, yeah, I tend to agree. Do you have anything to add, Jay, or do you want to move on to maybe your favorite signing of the uh, calendar year so far? Uh, let's move. Let's move on. All right, it's time for the Vans Dance to take on a new challenger. Steelers have signed tight end Eric Ebron to a two-year, $12 million contract. I have a note here in the show doc added by uh, <sighs> Judge Giamatti, which is very hard for me to read because I'm distracted also by a picture of Big Ben dressed up as a gnome. Oh, wait, that's just Big Ben. And it says, how hype is Jason? How hype is Jason with Eric Ebron to Pittsburgh? It seems like a great opportunity for some touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, uh, Jason is hype. Jason is hype, but I would say, 
Um, hype is Jason. Hype, how Jason. hype is hype? How hype is Jason? Jason is hype. Uh, look, Eric <laughs> Ebron. He's he's still a very young. Uh, you know, he's player. always twenty two. That's how old Eric <laughs> Ebron is. But the thing is, is for his age at the tight end position, there are only a handful of people who have as many passing yards and pa- and receiving touch receiving yards, receiving touchdowns as Eric Ebron does. Now he comes to a team that really needs another pass catcher. Assuming that Big Ben can get back to where he left off. You know, he's pretty much every year having a 16 game pace of nearly 5,000 yards. Granted that was with Antonio Brown, but obviously he can sling it around. You had Vance dance, uh, restructure his contract this season, this off season, take a little yeah, bit no less choice. money. Yeah. You want to stick around on the team? You're going to restructure. And then it's all called of a sudden the they, McKinnon and they go yes. sign Eric Ebron. So I think that that says, you know, you, you, we always talk about watch the money, watch those transactions versus what, the fluff is being said. The money says that Eric Ebron is going to be their main receiving tight end. So the opportunity will be there. But I, you know, it's like I kind of joke about my love for Ebron because it's not it's not true. Like, I don't I don't sit here and think like he is the greatest. You know, I talk about carry on Johnson, right? I think carry on Johnson is genuinely one of the best running backs in football. I, I genuinely believe that. I don't think Eric Ebron is one of the best tight ends in football. I do think for fantasy, he will be relevant. I mean, he's had double-digit touchdown seasons before, and if if Big Ben's throwing the ball, he'll, he'll be a weekly streaming great option uh, as far as in the right matchup. I mean, it was it was clear that it didn't add up for Vance last year. I mean, that that that's like the best summary of the season. It didn't work out. You had the offensive coordinator coming out, and like you had those conversations about, hey, he's not going to get more snaps. You know, like there's something that wasn't adding up. You know, and we see this at tight end. You you are grasping at straws at tight end. You are hoping for the Trey Burtons of the world, you know, in, in years past. And Vance Dance was one of those situations too. I'm yeah. I'm in on Ebron as a, you know, somebody that's going to make make a contribution to fantasy teams more often than he doesn't. Do you realize, like, the Bears, they really wanted a pass-catching tight end. And so they went out and they signed Jimmy Graham for, I think, two years, $14 million. And they didn't, like, would you Whoops. rather... Have Jim, and then and then like a week later, Eric Ebron signs for two years, twelve million. Jimmy Graham no. has that uh, from you know that special spell that when he meets people in person, he still looks like he's very young. Yeah, he like must. the lady in uh, what's the show I'm thinking about? What the, I do oh not know. Ga- Game Red Thrones? Woman and Game, Red Red Game of Thrones. Thank <laughs> yeah. you, the Red okay. Woman. Yes. All right. Yeah. Uh, sorry. So, so he Quar- has like a magical brain. amulet. He's got an amulet he wears to these meetings. And I should wear it green- to the games. I thought he just showed up with <laughs> Drew Brees film and was like, look at me. <laughs> look at me back then. He had somebody go in like, uh, with some CGI and put a different jersey on his, his Saints film. No, I don't know why he keeps tricking people into uh, being that valuable. You could, I would rather have Eric Ebron than Jimmy Graham. Yes, yes absolutely. I think I, I'm, not on, I'm not in. For Ebron, I think it'll just be a problem. And, and like when you're going with the late tight ends, I want the guy who's at least going to be on the field sustainably. And with Vance, because like, Vance McDonald's on the team, he's going to be there. He's going to help the team. He's not going to help your fantasy team. And I feel like that's what will be the same news for for Ebron. I I just I'm getting ready to hear all of the reminders of Heath Miller and Big Ben and what the off season used to be like and. Yeah, that was I mean, me last year. What the regular year. season was like with Heath, Heath Miller. <laughs> All right, uh, Emmanuel Sanders, big signing, goes to the 49ers, two years, 16, or I'm sorry, from the 49ers, now to the Saints, two years, $16 million. This is my favorite signing of the offseason. Really? It's just a tell. perfect fit. So to like me, it's for, a perfect fit for Breeze, not necessarily for Sanders. Okay, that's what every I was going to ask. But in terms of a, a, a player team fit, I, I love it. Yeah, I think it's a it's massive for for Breeze. If you look at what the uh, what the team was dealing with last year, I mean, it, you got Michael Thomas, of course, who's the undisputed number one fantasy wide receiver right now. You had Kamara, and you have you have Jared Cook. Jared, I mean, Jared Cook. That was it. I mean, if if you're talking about what other wide receivers of note, no one emerged for this team, and Emmanuel Sanders can still absolutely get it done. He will. He'll he'll flash. He'll have you know two or three games where he'll just put up insane fantasy production, and people go out and they'll throw grab him from the waiver wire, and then 
he won't do anything and he'll be tossed right back to the waiver wire. But in terms of Drew Brees, who had, I mean, one of his best statistical seasons ever last year, it's pretty exciting that maybe maybe Brees can keep it up and still be a high level fantasy quarterback. Is this when, any cold water for Michael Thomas? That, that's the question I was just going to bring up. You know, I, I don't me. think anybody is worried about Michael Thomas. You're not out there saying, "Oh no, Emmanuel Sanders showed up. Now he's not going to be the one." Um, but I do think if you're talking about not going to be the number one wide receiver in fantasy, that, then that makes that makes a little bit of sense because you know his market share. You, you basically see every play. It's it's just where's Michael Thomas? Let me throw him the ball every single play. And when you've got a really good quality route runner on the other side in Emmanuel Sanders, it's going to be better for the Saints to utilize him. And and I think that, you know, that'll take a little bit of the target market share away from Michael Thomas, but you're still talking about definitely a top five wide receiver, but I don't know that he'll be my number one wide receiver. Mike, uh, is Sanders a top 36 guy in this situation? Uh he he might be one of those players that he finishes inside the top thirty six, but you're you're not going to be getting consistent wide receiver three numbers for him. Okay, uh, we also have uh, Brian Hoyer signing a contract. Mediocre signing of the week. Can I ask well, a quick question on yeah. this? Go ahead. Who has Brian Hoyer in our uh, dynasty league? Yeah, I oh, went and I gosh. saw you spent eleven <laughs> bucks for the backup. Did you just flex on Brian Hoyer? Uh. I, it, it pays to learn the offenses of various teams when you're a backup quarterback, because then they just you know as soon as they move away from their starter, you've got you you get to come in and make your one year contract money. Well, we talked so, about this with Jarrett Stidham, the fact that he might be the he might actually be the starter. Solely I think he be, will be solely because if OTAs are shortened, you just don't have time to institute a, a new playbook to a new quarterback quite the same um, because of the coronavirus. And so what do they do? They go out and get a backup who has been in this system and, and knows it. And Hoyer, you know, Hoyer and his agent, they came out. Uh, he, he was he was offered. I forget the contract, but it was it was detailed. He turned down more money so that he could have the chance to start. That's what he was promised that he can have the chance to compete for the starting role. That's why he took uh, that uh, job. And so I don't know that Jared Stidham is going to win. I, I think Brian I, – I would put the odds at Brian Hoyer being the week one starter right now. All right, let's get into some mailbag. 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 All right, I didn't mention Nelson Aguilar, by the way. Mm. Just hey! in case. I wanted to save it. We had the mailbag was so flooded with Aguilar related questions. The people that it want seemed. To know. I think that they. I mean, I, there, there's. I, I, I believe I, I have created a theory that they have signed Nelson Aguilar to ensure they can get Marcus Mariota on the field, because mm. the worst mm. that Aguilar does, the worst Derek Carr looks, and then it's like, okay, well, we gotta, we gotta bring in Mariota. It just seems, it just seems like overthinking it a little bit. So yeah. you should just probably just play Mariota if you want to do that. Why sign Why sign Nelson Aguilar? He <laughs> seems to benefit from this situation a lot. They did pay Mariota quite a bit as a backup, fully guaranteeing that first year. So he he's definitely going to be pushing Carr for. But Mariota is not no. He's no good. That's that is the also true. Problem. I That's would agree the, with the, that. And I'm I'm sorry to say it because I loved him coming out and it seemed like he was he was heading that direction. You remember when he was. Just insanely efficient in the red zone, and that team was winning games. What happened, dude? He was throwing touchdowns to himself. It was awesome. <sighs> that was back when he was good, and Tannehill stunk. Now Tannehill's good, and he stinks. What? All right, what a that, world. that's what Tennessee hopes. <laughs> All right, we're in the mailbag. If you have a question, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a question button. You can also dial our voicemail hotline three zero two four six four TFFB. We want to help you out. We got a James Conner question from somebody named James in Sacramento. Wow. All right. Hi, guys. I love the show. What does a dynasty owner do with James Conner? We started last year, and, uh, well, he was pretty much a bust. Does he come back to form? Does he have any trade value? This is an important question. Dynasty owners with James Conner are shaking in their boots. I don't I don't know that he has much trade value. Uh, if, if you, I mean, you might be able to trade for James Conner because I, I just don't think you're going to get much from an owner. I think you have to hold on and hope that he's the guy. We saw two things last year from James Conner. One, 
He was still pretty good when he was out there, and obviously the offense stunk without Big Ben. So there's optimism here, reason to believe that with the good offense, you can pretty much delete all the performances, right? Juju and uh, you know everybody that was a Steeler. You can say, well, that wasn't their fault. They didn't have a quarterback. But the other thing we saw was like this guy cannot stay on the field. And it wasn't as simple as like, oh, he tore an ACL. This is just every single game. He hurts his shoulder. He hurts his hip. I don't know. He just, he, he left, you know, how many games did he finally come back from missing a week or two and then play a quarter and leave the game? So I'm not you sure. You did have the, the team didn't give him a free pass either in the off season. You know, the way that like a fantasy owner wants to look at that situation and say, Maybe you can just throw it out. At least the team publicly came out and said, look, that's not what we expected from James Conner. Yeah, I would I would jump in and say I, his trade value is is not very high. If I have James Conner, I would probably just hang on to him because I, I agree with Jason. When, when James Conner was on the field, he was productive. He was by far the best running back on that team. It wouldn't be surprising to have the, the, the band get back together and have Mike Tomlin continue to do what he does, which is he prefers to rely on one running back. At least that's what we have seen in a pretty uh, historical career so far. So I would hold Connor and just hope that he stays healthy. Because if, if he had stayed healthy last year, I think he would have been just fine for fantasy. Maybe not let, great, let me, but at least Let me ask enough. you this, Mike. Let's say they don't draft a, another running back or go out and sign someone. They, they, they roll with Benny Snell and James Connor and hope that Big Ben fixes that. You were very bullish on James Conner yeah. coming into this season based on watching him get injured left, right, and center. Do you now, like as a drafter, come this season, he is the main guy. Are you going to be bullish again, or, is, or does the risk kind of turn you I off? Will, and I will be very bullish for his production, but you can't ignore the, the, the health risks that he, that he showed last year. So, I mean, which will... It will price into his his average draft position accordingly. We'll see where that is. But if you're saying like James Conner is going in the the like the fourth round or so, then I'd be pretty bullish on on taking the shot. There'll be a team. I, I really want to see if they spend any money in the offseason at the running back position. They, they one of those guys that is out there could end up on in that backfield just because they didn't have reliability beyond Conner last year. I'll be very curious to see if that happens. All right, this next question comes in from James in Florida. Apparently, we only accept questions from people named James. It's just correct. kind of it's just part of what our show is about. Um, so to all the Jameses out there, congrats. All right, who is your favorite of the three Giants wide receivers going into the season? This is a great question. I mean, Darius Slayton, Sterling Shepard, Golden Tate, half-point PPR league. How on earth do you make this decision as a fantasy owner? Well, I think you make this decision by – looking at your team needs, right? I mean, both I, – I think all of these guys are going to be later drafted players. So did you take wide receivers early? Did you take solid guys where, you know, the only way that a guy's going to crack your roster here is if he blows up and does something special? To me, that would be Darius Slayton. I w you know, I would take that risk. that he, he looked great. He was a rookie this year. He had some major breakout games, and I think it's possible he becomes, you know, a legit – number one wide receiver. Now, is that probable? Probably not, which is why he's going to be later in drafts. But if you, you know, were very running back heavy and you just need more of a sure thing, but you're, you know, just to a plug a, a wide receiver hole, I, I would say that that's Shepard to me. And I, I don't know where Tate is. Really? Tate, I, my answer is not my Tate. Answer, that's my, my only is answer. Tate. Is, no, yeah, I'm goodness. with Andy. I'm with Andy. No, I'm, I'm not I, My only answer is not Tate because I know that what Jason described about Slayton's potential breakout or Shepard being healthy and consistent, like both of those look like upside to me. Tate is on the back half of his career and those other guys are there. So I, I, I feel like not Tate is my only answer. Hmm. Why do you like him more, Mike? I I mean, he's now he'll be on the second year of, of a very large contract that the team gave to him and, and he was actually pretty good. I mean, I'm looking through the game log right now and if you his first game back was really bad, but then 100 yards, 80 yards, 85 yards, 95 yards a couple games after that, finished the season uh, the second to last week with 96 yards. Like Golden Tate wasn't bad by, by any stretch. If you throw out the first game when he was back, he was averaging almost eight targets a game, nearly five receptions and 66 yards. Were those yards. Shepard free? 
That one off the top of my head, I can't remember which okay. games Shepard missed. I'm just worried about upside. Like if I'm on, if and I'm gonna spend like yeah. a, a pick later on on a, run, a wide receiver, that's I think Tate will be involved. But like I'm talking, you know, what is he gonna have? Maybe four receptions, five receptions. I I'm I'm unsure about that offense in general. That's fair. I mean, it's it's tough because I think that Daniel Jones will provide. I think Daniel Jones will provide fantasy value for someone. Maybe it ends up becoming Slayton who emerges. But for now, if like I'm choosing right now because James is making me choose right now, I'll take the guy who had a pretty decent year and is still getting paid a lot of. He's being paid to be the guy. All right, Jason, you have to pick one. If I have to pick one, I'm going to go with Darius Slayton. I I really liked what I saw. Uh, rookie with the rookie quarterback. I think those two young men are going to grow together. All right, and I'll go with the big money of Sterling Shepard, who got paid as well. So that way we can each answer differently. You're welcome, James. To support our Jameses <laughs> out there. All right. Uh, <laughs> James from Twitter. <laughs> no, this one actually, it's Michael. Uh, he has a question. He says, what is the best Doritos flavor? This is an important question. All right. Uh, you're quarantined. You're, you're probably in a position where you're within arm's have- reach of some Doritos right now. I have been eating a lot of Doritos. <laughs> this is this is not a joke. Hashtag not um, a sponsor. No, yeah, they, they are not a sponsor. I would gladly sponsor Doritos, but I'm I'm plain. I'm boring when it comes to Doritos. But the the nacho cheese is my favorite. Na- nacho cheese is the best, but I I really like the spicy nacho cheese. You know, give it mm. just the nacho cheese has got a little kick because I'm not a huge. Why is like, that? Why is that considered plain? I mean, isn't it like because that's that's I mean, the default. That and Cool Ranch. Nacho like, cheese is right. Those are the two, right? Yeah, those just because they're the default flavors. If and you just I say know. Doritos, if you just say Doritos, I think I think cool everyone Ranch. really, yeah, that's your default thought. And Al yeah. Borland, what what you, monster, Al Borland, I see him sending a note. He says Cool Ranch. Is well, the Cool Ranch. I'm not saying that you might not prefer Cool Ranch. I'm just saying if you think of Doritos in general, you well, don't we think of the orange bag. Out. Yeah, I mean, you don't see the the nacho bag. I just the, think I, I think of them as equals, as Cool Ranch mm. and Nacho Cheese. You just choose each one; they're they're equals. I'm with mm. you there, Andy. They're in a tier one by themselves. Both of them? <laughs> yes. Thank you, Brooks. Yes. But if someone nice. says Brooks, if someone were to just say, um, you know, here Give have me a some nacho. Doritos. Here's here's a here or uh, have a nacho. Here here's a Dorito. What do you expect them to hand you? They're only handing you one chip. What do you okay, think? Okay, okay. I'm, be I'm expecting you? the nacho cheese. Yeah. Oh come on, Brooks. He's, a, he's, a, he's an honest I would, man. I would have to say, what flavor is this? <laughs> I don't have a default. We need to poll the audience. This is something I need to know if I'm, I'm living right. out there. All right. Uh, let's go here. Twitter, uh, this one comes in from The Sweet Engineer. He says, had a dynasty offer just pop up, DK Metcalf and Josh Jacobs for Saquon Barkley. Ooh. Mm. Oof. So... That, what do you do there with Jacobs? Not, I mean, he's got so much potential. Metcalf has potential. I mean that that is a very, I, I think it's a very fair trade. Um, and I would prefer the Saquon side, I think, because uh, look, the longevity is going to be with Metcalf over either of these two running backs, and so depth wise, which is important for Dynasty, that's on the DK Metcalf Josh Jacobs side. But winning championships, it takes star players. It takes players who basically score. Uh, you know, like having two players in one position and maybe Josh Jacobs gets there. They're talking about upping his passing work, but Saquon is there. He has been there. And so uh, if you got the chance to get Saquon, I, I think I would do, I, I would take that. What about you two? Barkley. I agree. I agree. It's Barkley. Like you said, Jacobs could get there. Saquon is there. Take it's the difference trade. maker. Yeah. Yeah, it probably is. All right. Jed in Syracuse says, uh, hey, ballers, should I keep Galladay? in the fifth or AJ Brown in the 13th round. Come on, man. The Jen, that's uh the round disparity really is question. too large. Like I, I, I think it is a fair question to say who finishes higher next year, Kenny Galladay or AJ Brown. Like that's to me is would be a very spirited debate for fantasy finish, but for the 13th, does this change round, your opinion at all, Mike? <laughs> oh, Look, so smooth. it's so smooth. It's so so smooth. Kenny G. Kenny G was the wide receiver six last year. Like 
he's Kenny Galladay broke out, and it's it's real. I mean, he's an excellent player. Assuming that Matt Stafford is back to health, Kenny Galladay, I I would project him to be a top twelve wide receiver. Maybe this instantly. isn't as easy as we think it is. I think because it's of as what easy you're as we saying, think it is. because I, no, because Matthew Stafford back, Kenny Galladay finished that high. You have a fifth rounder. I mean, if you substituted Michael Thomas in the fifth or AJ Brown in the thirteenth, what's your answer? Michael Thomas. Who's Michael Thomas. Okay, so it's not you know it's not just that the fact that Brown is a, a basically free here. No, I just I'm curious. Yeah, it's not, but I mean, you know, the fifth round is still you, there's still valuable pieces you're going to get there, starters, not flyers, uh, for your team, and uh, you know, I think. In the 13th round, you're taking flyers. And if A.J. Brown outproduces Galladay next year, nobody's going to be surprised. Nobody's going to be shocked. You know, like, uh, I I would take Galladay over A.J. Brown. If these guys were both in the fifth or even maybe a fifth, sixth, okay, you know, I lean towards Galladay. But if you're telling me I get a free fifth rounder uh, to pick and add to A.J. Brown, I'd rather have that than Galladay plus a 13th rounder. All right. I tried I tried to, to make it harder. I played some sweet jazz, but it Kenny didn't do was so smooth. smooth jazz. Yeah. All right. That is going to do it for us, the fantasy footballers here on this fine Tuesday. Hope you enjoyed the show. You can find us on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. And make sure you subscribe. Click the bell. Mike, uh, while I was uh, sick this past week, I really enjoyed watching you make a drop. It gave Oof. me a new respect for you as a person. I appreciate I thought that. that you were oh, just... That's amazing because it gave me so much less respect. I was just like, <laughs> that took him five minutes and he's got a sweet drop. It looks easy I for just him. assumed he, he came home and then just downloaded them. I didn't realize that he actually played the guitar. I had it's no true. Idea. There is, there's actual proof up there on the YouTube now that I do it. Uh, it was really cool That's to see. A, it, it was a lot of fun. So make sure you check that out on the YouTube as well, on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And we will be back with you Thursday. it has been a lot of fun. I'm glad we're... Glad we're back at it as a uh, three-pack. That is correct. Everyone stay safe out there. If you can stay home, please do that. Be kind to everyone. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers. Ballers.